Voters, this is an example of what your ballot is going to look like. This is my official ballot. You can see it's two pages, and not only is it two pages front, but it's two pages back as well. Hi, I'm Tom Collins. I'm Gina Roberts. And we're with Clean Elections, and we're here today to talk about your ballot. Say, voters, your ballot is going to be very long, which means if we have a very long ballot, let's really make a plan to vote. Many of our Arizona voters right now have already received their ballot package in the mail, which um, I'll let you show yours off, Tom. And then I'm going to actually open mine up to give you a heads up of what to expect. So, so yes, yeah, so the early ballot envelope... It, it says the words affidavit, and that, that's meaningful. You're, you're literally signing a legal document with that envelope that says, I am who I say I am, I am a registered voter, and I voted this ballot that's inside this envelope. And as Gina said, that gets compared to all your signatures on file and your voter record, and that's how we can assure voters that your vote is by you uh, before your vote is even uh, ca uh, counted. That's very important. So every single person that is casting a ballot, their ID is verified every single time. Um, voters, your mailboxes should also be full of information about what's on your ballot, those propositions. You would have received a guide from Clean Elections, your voter education guide, and then here it is. Here's the ballot. Um, and so we typically start off with those federal races. And then on the back side of this, you're gonna see judges and justices that are up for retention. So a lot of information there, and then I get to my second page, and then this is where I'm going to see my propositions. So what I'm gonna do is, when I go home today, I'm gonna fill out my ballot, and I'm gonna have all of the information that I need so I can learn about the candidates and those ballot measures. A great resource for you is visiting our website because we have all of that information in one location for you. I'm gonna take my pen, I'm gonna circle in the oval for my selection. There's sections in there for write-ins if you wanted to put in a write-in candidate name, but it has to be an official write-in who actually filed paperwork in order for it to count. And then when I'm done, when I have completely filled out my ballots and made all of my selections, I'm gonna take both of those pages, I'm gonna put it back in this affidavit envelope, and I'm going to make sure that I seal it and that I sign it, I'm gonna date it, and then I'm also gonna put my phone number. So this is up to you. I'm putting my phone number because if there's any question at all that the county has about my signature, let's say you know it's changed over the years, or if I have a, uh, if I changed my name recently, or maybe I have an injury and I have to sign with my left hand, if I have anything that it can impact my signature, I'm going to go ahead and put my phone number there. That way, the county can call me because when they're doing right, that signature right. verification, they'll reach out and say, "Hey, we just want to make sure that this truly was you that voted this ballot." So I'm going to sign it, I'm going to seal it, and then I'm going to put it right back into my mailbox and I'm gonna send it off. And I'm gonna do that so that it has enough time to get back to the county to be received by 7 p.m. on election day. But there's other ways, right, that I can right. drop it off? Yeah, so you can uh, drop it, you can bring it to a uh, drop box uh, in your county, and we have a map of all the drop boxes in the state on our website. Um, you can also bring it to the poll on election day and, and, and drop it off there. If you haven't gotten an early ballot, you are uh, vo voting election day, you're gonna get a sample ballot mm -hmm. in the mail. Uh, if you don't get it in the mail, um, you can go to your county website and you can look at it there and, the, and you can print one off. But I really recommend you use that tool because you can do the same work. You can do your, basically you want to do your homework. That's going to help you in two ways. Number one, it's going to keep you moving faster. But the other thing is think about everybody else who's going to be voting on election day. If they're not prepared, you're looking at the potential for, you know, a little more time. So you want to plan ahead that too. You want to build in a little more time in your schedule just in case if you're going to vote on election day. So make a plan. Do your homework, bring your sample ballot, and prepare to give it a little more time because folks are going to be working through uh, that material. Yes, that, that's really important because if you, again, want to see faster results and if you want to see uh, not very long lines, then you directly contribute to that as the voters by being prepared, making your plan. That way you can make sure um, you know that there's not that very long of lines at the polls and again that we can get all of those ballots tabulated as quickly as possible by doing your part and making sure that you have a plan to vote. So remember, election day is November 5th and however you vote, your ballot has to be in the county recorder's hands by 7 p.m. Or, or other election official. And um, make sure to check out our website, azcleanelections.gov, for your guide to candidates, debates, and everything else you need to cast your ballot.